to Ann Mathis. Good to see you again. When you lost to Ann Mathis in 2011, a lot was made of, of that fight, first knockout loss and all that. And now you're coming off your first knockout loss in MMA. Did you learn any lessons from that experience bouncing back? Because you never lost in boxing after that, confidence-wise, getting back on track and not harping on it. You know, uh, I remember a lot of my feelings and a lot of my thoughts after that knockout as everybody, you know, was saying, oh, you should retire and all this. I hear all the same stuff after this last fight. And it's like, imagine if I would have retired after the Ann Sophie fight, how much of my career I would have missed out. I would have never made the transition to MMA, like, and, and come to be a champion again. So I don't really... It doesn't really affect me if other people think I should retire. I didn't want to retire, and I'm really glad I didn't. And I'm still there right now. I don't want to retire. I'm not ready for that. And, you know, coming off of a, a knockout, yeah, it's nerve-wracking. Am I going to get hit? Get, you know, <laughs> you can't control it. You can't, get, you can't say, no, I'm not going to get knocked out. So, but you know what? I, I've been sparring great. My training camp has been great. And there's a reason why we're out there putting it on the line, because a lot of people just... They wouldn't do it. It's a, uh, you know, when you get in there, you're fully exposed, and that's what we do. That's why people watch it, because you don't know what's going to happen. And yeah, it's nerve wracking. My nerves are high, but in a good way. I'm motivated for it. And you seem to be, you know, you were very open about your 2019, 2020 new year, new you, your social media. It's like you're glowing on there. You seem to be in a very good place. Do you feel like that helps you as well? You know, tumultuous fight, but since you're in a good place mentally, personally, that helps get over the loss as well. Yeah, I feel like I have a lot of blessings in life, and it doesn't really matter what's going on out there. 2019 probably was one of my, if you look on factual things that happened, it's probably one of my most, uh, like, it was, oof, it was a pretty stressful year. But um, with that being said, it actually was one of my happier years. So um, I always used to feel like stress went with happiness, and that's not really the case. I think it just depends on, you know, what you really have in your life and, and and your blessings you have, and um, I'm, I'm truly blessed in this life. I truly feel that, and yeah, it's been a rough year, but I also made it through it, <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you. It seems like uh, everybody, when they're, when they're interviewed, fighters, they're always talking about their legacy, their legacy. Years ago, maybe you didn't hear that as much, but are you concerned at all? Do you think about that at all, or, or do you just want to wait until uh, the time that you step away and then think about it. Um, I want to. I want to keep building my legacy. That's what I want because I want it to be memorable when I get to the end. And I don't feel like I'm done building my legacy. So I'm going to keep pushing forward and keep going for victory. And and in the end, then that will be my legacy. What, what's the most important part of that to you? Uh, your legacy. What would you like people to look back at you and, and think of? I want people to see that I believed in myself. I want people to see that I took chances when a lot of people thought that I couldn't uh, do something. I showed them that I could. I want to show people that, you know, I, I'm not going to walk away with my tail between my legs after something bad happens and I want to take the easy route and just say I'm done. I want to keep pushing forward. Uh, it's, un it's definitely an uncomfortable feeling to get back in there and, you know, after you have some losses sometimes it's like, man, you know, you, you, you deal with a lot of self-doubt and things like that, but I refuse to let myself think that, you know, I want to keep going forward and I know what my capabilities are and I want, I want that to show people that whatever it is in life, that because life's not perfect. We're all going to face stuff like that. Our, our losses are just known. Our losses are seen by everybody. You know, a lot of people have stuff in their own jobs. They're not, you know, plastered on the front page of the news and all over the internet and all over social media. Ours is, and that's okay, with, that's okay with me, because you know what? When you win and you get your hand raised, that picture is on the front page of the news on social media, and that's what I'm going for. I appreciate it. Thank you, and best of luck to you. Thank you. It's sort of connected to that. I asked Anthony Pettis about the Showtime kick and about that feeling that no matter what, what happens, in, in 50 years, people are still going to be watching that highlight. You, obviously, with the Ronda win, have one like that. Do you ever think about that? I mean, that's kind of cool that, that that's going to outlive you. I do think uh, sometimes, like, wow. I look back like, well, that was a cool moment, and that was a cool moment, and that was a cool moment. And I'm like, and then all I think is, ooh, I want more cool moments, you know? I want to feel that again. And so that's what keeps me going. What's it like to fight on a card with McGregor? I mean, everything's amplified. Everything's bigger when McGregor's here in Vegas. What's that like for you? I think that it's great, and I love to be a part of a big card. I love to feel the passion. You know, he he comes in, and you 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 can't help but feel his passion. You can't help but feel his energy. And who doesn't? It's It's addicting. It's addicting. People like to be around that vibe. So yeah, I love being I love being part of this card. I love being around good vibes, uh, intense vibes, passionate vibes. That's what this whole job is about.
Saturday will be, you know, all the eyes in the world are tuning in on Saturday. What's that like for you to be on a big card like this where the whole world is watching? Let's not let this time pass us by and say, I wish I could have, should have. Let's make it happen. How has the hype mach machine changed since you've been, you know, at the main event, going main event status? Gosh, uh, you know, when I came into the UFC, I didn't think that it would be co-main event my first fight, and it was. And that was with Raquel Pennington, and her and I have both been right up there in the rankings this whole time. You know, I got the championship, I let that go, and I want it back. And her and I are, you know, we're here facing each other, and I want to be the one back to the belt. When you look at that first when you look at that first fight between you and Pennington, how do you sort of evaluate your performance in that fight when you look back at it? Oh, you know, back then I wasn't very comfortable being, you know, in all parts of the mixed martial arts, you know, grappling, wrestling. Uh, so I was kind of a little more one-dimensional back then, and now I feel like I'm more, I, I can adapt to, I'm very comfortable and confident in all aspects of the game. So when you have that, I feel like then you're more confident to be able to let things flow a little bit without being so worried about, oh my gosh, I don't want the fight to go here or here. Um, and I think that's the difference between then and now for me. And how much attention have you been paying to her career in her last couple of fights? Uh, I always felt like it was possible for me to have a rematch with her, and so here we are. Uh, so I always watch, but usually I like to watch any of the girls in my weight class fighting anyway. I like to just kind of see because you never know what it's going to be. My first fight in the UFC, I wouldn't think that my third fight in the UFC would have been for the belt. So I always like to watch them, um, just kind of see the competition and just kind of always kind of know because any fight could be the next one. And now that you are a little bit more complete and as you said, you feel much more comfortable in all facets of MMA, do you think we might see another highlight reel worthy uh, performance that might even overshadow the Ronda knockout a little bit? That's what I trained my ass off for. <laughs> That's what I'm searching for. I always want, I want to make big things happen. Having competed Thank in you. boxing, kickboxing.